Hey guys, well today I'm going to tell you about the story of Bobby the Chico and this beef we had with Michael Hamster. The first hit, the second hit, and the third hit what took place. Now, when Frankie the Chico died, the neighborhood basically really turned to shit. You know, Sparrow was always the main guy in the neighborhood. He was like the John Gotti of Bath Avenue. He was very quiet, low key. He was a kind, nice guy, but he was also vicious and treacherous in his own way. You know, he went to trial. He was convicted for the Joe Pizza murder, the Vincent Bickerman murder, and the Louis Tuzio murder, and Paulie Galino murder. Now, when Frank Chico died, I was always friends with Michael D. Leonardo, but at the time also going into the social clubs, I became friendly with a guy by the name of Bobby DeChico. Now, Bobby DeChico was a knock around guy. He was a card dealer. He took action as far as betting and numbers. He had a betting place, a sports place over the phones. And I started working with him, taking some action. And I would also take action from some of my friends. And sometimes we would bullshit him and make believe we won. But sometimes we lost too. But I'm going to get into those stories later on. But this particular story was, I started hanging out with him. He had a couple of dollars. He had a nice car. He was Georgie DeChico's son. Georgie DeChico was a captain in the Gambino crime family. They called him Georgie Blue Eyes, and he had some clout in the neighborhood. He had his own social club on Bay 13th and Bat Avenue. And I started having card games in his club at nighttime, and my friends would come. But Bobby DeChico loved to hang around young kids. For some reason, he liked young kids. And later on in life, we found out he wanted to be with these young kids. So he was very shady. And there's a lot of backstories to this guy. Now, at the time, I'm hanging out with him. So I'm bringing my friends around. He would take us out to dinners. He would take us to the bars in the neighborhood. And at this time, you were allowed to hang out in bars when you were young. I'm going back 13, 14, 15 years old. Now, you can't go in a bar at that age because it's a totally different world we live in than compared to how we used to live. Now, Bobby the Chico starts making friends with this kid, Michael Hamster. Michael Hamster starts bringing his friends around. I'm gonna fast forward this a little, and then I'll go back later on into these stories. I just wanna give you the main story of why Michael Hamster was shot. Now, John Polio didn't like Bobby the Chico. Bobby the Chico didn't like John Polio. Now, with the John Polio murder, it's like a big conspiracy because John Polio was basically around Georgie Conti, and Georgie Conti was supplying John Polio, Albert Slavin, Tommy Reynolds, and myself with cocaine and pot. And it's a big story of how the neighborhood works. And Bobby the Chico didn't like John Polio because, you know, he was involved in drugs, and some of my friends were, were involved in drugs. And so anyway, Bobby the Chico brings around these new kids, Michael Hamster and a couple of his friends. I don't even want to mention his friends because I don't even want to give them a platform. But the kid Michael Hamster, I, I'm going to mention, okay? Now this kid, when he first came around, I was friendly with him. 
I used to go to uh, the Brown Derby with Bobby De Chico. I went to Pastels one time with Georgie De Chico and Bobby De Chico. And this is when John Gotti was the boss. That's the first time I met John Gotti. And we were sitting down with Georgie De Chico and John Gotti came over to the table and, you know, we said hello to him. I was mesmerized, you know, the first time we met John Gotti. He told Georgie De Chico, make sure these kids aren't aren't involved in drugs. So that's the first time I actually seen John Gotti in person with my own eyes. So that night I was basically mesmerized, you know, hanging around John Gotti. He walks in with a crew of guys and Georgie De Chico's there, he's a captain. And it was a, a night out in pastels. So at the end of the night, we go out, we always go out to breakfast after that. It was, that's how those days were. You go to the Vegas diner, there's diners all over the place. Everybody meets later on and have breakfast. Now, at this time, my friends, Calco, Tommy Reynolds, Paulie G was always on Bay 23rd. Paulie G had nothing to do with this part at the time. Paulie G was very good friends with John Polio. I'm gonna get into the stories later on of how me and Paulie G became best friends. Those stories, I'm gonna continue. I know you just wanna hear about Paulie G. Paulie G was a great kid, great athlete, and a great friend to everyone. Now, the reason why Michael Hampstead got shot was eventually he was jealous of me and my friends. And he started beating up me and my friends. He started beating up little Georgie Adamo. Now this is when little Georgie Adamo got involved in drugs. He put little Georgie Adamo in a concussion and he was walking around clouding and thinking who he was. He had a fist fight with Tommy Reynolds, Michael Hamster, and Michael Hamster got the best of him because he was a boxer, so he was pretty good with his hands. I wasn't there that time, and after Tommy Reynolds fought him, nobody jumped in and helped Tommy Reynolds. And Tommy Reynolds told me that day, he says, Jimmy, I'm glad you weren't there because no one even jumped in and helped me. And I said, Tommy, you know, if I was there, I would have jumped in, whether we won or lost, I would have definitely helped you. He knows that, because that's how it was. Now, the first hit was after John Polio was murdered. You know, Bobby De Chico turned us all against each other. What happened was, it was rumor in the street that John Polio called Bobby De Chico a fag. And it got back to Bobby De Chico and on this particular day, he was telling me and Michael Hamster that he wants to beat up John Polio and he wanted us to get John Polio. Now, John Polio was also my friend. I was very close with him. He's actually like a piece of family to me. My uncle and his sister are married and I got family with them. So, on this day, John Polio is in 17th Avenue Park with Paulie Galino. And Bobby DeChico is brainwashing me and the kid Michael Hamster to go get John Polio and beat him up. Now, we pull up in the 17th Avenue Park and we chase John Polio and Paulie Galino runs with him. Now, I'm going back, back, back to the day of the cause of these problems. Now, this is maybe 1987, it could be 86. Polio was murdered on April 4th of 1988. So I'm giving you time frame of things that happened in the course of Beth Avenue. So we chased them, Paulie G runs with Polio, and I'm not really running, but Michael Hamster's running, and they get away. Okay, I made them get away, they got away. Now, in the course of that time, we're gonna fast forward, John Polio gets murdered. After John Polio gets murdered, we really didn't know who it was. This kid, Michael Hamster, is making believe 
that he killed John Polio, or he's taking credit for Polio's murder. We find out later on it was Georgie Conti. Now, in the neighborhood at this time, you know, all these kids want to get strained out. You know, Frankie Maracondo was alive at this time. He was a scumbag. He always was. We found out later on through the grapevine, through the streets, that Polio got into Georgie Conti's car. Frankie Maracondo was in the car. They broke his finger and they killed him. Uh, Georgie Conti copped out to that murder of John Polio with another seven other murders. Now, Georgie Conti also was a captain in the, in the family, Lucchese family, and he was a shady guy too. There's a lot more stories I'm gonna talk about him. And I know these guys wanna silence me, but I'm not gonna be silenced. I'm gonna be telling it like it is and how it was. So the first hit on Michael Hamster was me and Joey Calco. Paulie G gave us a pistol. You know, he was beating up some of my friends and he was walking around driving Bobby DeChico's car up and down Beth Avenue thinking he was a gangster with sunglasses, dressing nice and all the other shit. So me and Paulie G become very good friends after John Polio was murdered. I'll get into that story another day, but I'm gonna go forward with the Michael Hamster hits. Now, me and Joey Calco get the pistol from Paulie G. We, we park on Bay 14th and Beth, and we watch Michael Hamster get into Bobby DeChico's car. Now, let me also put into this that I used to eat at Bobby DeChico's sister's house, Barbara, and Georgia DeChico's house all the time, so I really got to know these people. And, you know, this is when, Bob, you know, I found out about Bobby Chico. He was really a piece of shit. He wasn't a nice guy. He used young kids. He would go out drinking with them. And he would turn all of us against each other. But he was a creep. That's, that's what it comes down to. He was a creep, plain and simple. So we're on Bay 14th Street. And we watch Michael Hampstead get into Bobby Chico's car. We follow him. He stops at Bay 7, 17th Avenue and Benson. Joey pulls up to him. Joey's got the pistol. I'm in the driver's seat. No, Joey's in the driver's seat. I'm in the passenger seat. Joey's looking at him and I'm telling Joey, Joey, what are you waiting for? So Joey throws a couple shots at him, five shots, and we hit him. Okay, we take off. Anyway, he lives. He goes to the hospital. We're calling up. Okay, he lived. They shoot him up with steroids. He lives, and he and he comes out strong. Joey takes off to Italy. I go to Manhattan to my father's apartment building. I stay there. Paulie G comes to see me. I skate in and out of the neighborhood. Paulie G gives me a gun to protect myself just in case. So I'm in and out of the neighborhood. I'm going to see Paulie G. Now, Tommy Karate comes into the picture, okay? Tommy Karate goes with me to go see Georgia the Chico, okay? And he sees Michael Hamster. Michael Hamster's all cleaned up and stuff like that. He walks into the club, and there's a sit-down, okay? And he tells... Michael Hamster, you killed their friend and stuff like that. You know, this kid, Jimmy's from the neighborhood all his life and nobody's gonna do nothing to him. So I also see Georgie DeChico. Georgie DeChico tells me, okay, we're gonna, you know, forget about this. If anything happens, after this, we're going to get families involved, meaning the crime families. And I go, Georgie, you know, you remember me, right? He says, yeah, yeah, Jimmy, I remember you. I remember you at my house sitting down, eating dinner with me and my family, Barbara, my sister Janine, and, you know, stuff like that. The brother-in-law, Paulie, they remembered me, okay? Because I was in the neighborhood all my life. I was in and out of Georgia Chico's club all the time. 
There was times they would send me for pastries. I'd bring them in the morning for the wise guys that will come in. And anyway, that passes. The second attempt, so now I'm a lot back in the neighborhood. Karate spoke for me. Joe Benanti spoke for me. And they knew I was around Sparrow and the Bananos now. So the second attempt was, I'm driving them around with Paulie Galino. I'm driving around with Paulie Galino around the neighborhood. Now, Tommy Reynolds at the time lived in Jersey. He would come in and he would call me or beat me from a phone or I would meet him sometimes and then he would get in my car or I get in his car and we go see Paulie G. Joey Calco was in Italy at this time. He was on the lam. So Paulie G is getting tight with Tommy Karate. Tommy Karate loves this kid. He turns him into a monster. Paulie G is doing his thing. He's shooting a couple people, stabbing a couple people, beating down people. He was a tough kid, Paulie G. He really was. That's why he was the leader of our crew. And he is the one who brought us back around. So this is how the mix started. So one day, me and Paulie G, we're driving around the neighborhood as we always did. And we're smoking pot. We're smoking a joint. Paulie G has a Cadillac. We're driving around. And Tommy Reynolds beeps me from Bay 19th and Cropsey Avenue in front of the Cropsey Lounge. Now, as he's beating, beeping me, he's waiting for me to call him back. Instead of calling him back, we drive straight to the payphone. As we drive to the payphone, this was the second hit on Michael Hamster. Michael Hamster at this time, as Tommy's waiting on the payphone, is walking into the Cropsey Lounge with George DeChico and Michael Hamster and Bobby DeChico. Now, back in the day, Sonny Giuliani had these get-togethers on the Cropsey Lounge. He would get all kinds of food and all wise guys from all different families would come on Thursday nights in the Cropsey Lounge. And I remember when I was a kid, I used to go there with the DeChicos and Hank the Bank would be there. Uh, all other wise guys would be there. And Hank, Hank the Bank, he could eat, man. And he was a good guy too. They killed him for no reason in the Colombo War. That was like, a senseless murder because he was harmless. But getting back to the Michael Hamster hit, what happened was, as Michael Hamster is walking into the Cropsey Lounge with George De Chico and Bobby De Chico, he walks up to Tommy Reynolds and he says, do you have a, what's your problem? You know, like he wants a problem with Reynolds. Meanwhile, Reynolds has a 45 on him. So as he walks up to Reynolds, and Reynolds goes, I ain't got no problem. Michael Hamster turns around and he starts, Tommy Reynolds pulls out his 45 and he starts throwing shots at the kid, Michael Hamster. That's when he blows out his kneecap and he shoots him a couple of times. So when he does this, me and Paulie G were driving straight to the payphone. As we get to the payphone, Tommy Reynolds ain't there no more. He took, he jumped in his car and took off. Me and Paulie G are just looking. We see the kid Michael Hamster on the floor with an ambulance pulling up, them putting him on a stretcher and him into the ambulance. So Tommy Reynolds eventually gets in touch with me. I meet him somewhere and he tells us what happened. So he goes back to Jersey, okay. That's the second hit on Michael Hamster. Now, the third hit, I'm gonna continue this on my next video. I'm gonna save this one because we got into a lot, but we're gonna get into Bobby the Chico. We're gonna get, in, get into the third hit on Michael Hamster. And with that said, I do have the t-shirts I'm waiting for the mugs. I'm waiting for the colored t-shirts. 
I have some hats coming. I appreciate all the support you guys have given me. And, you know, I have to say it the way it is. I'm not going to lie. Everyone's telling their bullshit stories. And I got to be truthful. You know, listen, I was a hoodlum. I was a dog. I was not straightened out. I mean, I dealt with a lot of wise guys. My neighborhood was scum of the earth. These guys, a lot of scumbags. The guys that were good, I'm going to talk good about them. The guys that were shit, I have to tell the truth. I'm not going to lie. But I have to say it the way it is. So with that said, today's Friday. To everyone, have a good weekend. I'm going to do another video tomorrow on the second, I mean the third attempt on Michael Hamster. And that's going to be a good one because Paulie G told me all about it. And at that time, I was doing 60 days in Rikers Island. I never took no probation when I was a kid. That's how it was. Probation, get the fuck out of here. That was a trick probation. I hear these guys, they talk about, I did six months, pro I did six months uh, in Rikers Island. I did, I did probation, get the fuck out of here. When I was a kid, I was a wild kid. I was the real deal. And I kept it like that. And when I flipped, I believe me, a lot of people were surprised. And it's the best thing I did in my life. But with that all said, I don't want to make this video too long because I think the long videos get boring. I love you guys. I love your support. And I'll see you on the next video. That might be later on today or I might give it to you tomorrow. But we're going to talk next on the third hit on Michael Hamster. Thanks, guys. I love you. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.